in the world is Dresta? <laughs> This is a Dresta TD40E Extra Bulldozer. It's made in 150 of scale by an unknown manufacturer. This thing is really pretty nice. For not having a name on it as, as far as a manufacturer, it's almost criminal because it's a really well done model. First of all, we're going to go over the dozer and then we're going to talk about why this is cool and why it's special. And I'm going to put it side by side with one of the CCM Dresser TD40s uh, towards the end. And it because it's really interesting. So, right off the bat, this thing is really pretty well done. Like I said, it's kind of criminal to not have your name on this because it's really a pretty great dozer for, for what it is. I mean, it's the the paint is very good, the decals are all pretty good. They could probably be a little bit more crisp, like that's a warning label for something. I don't know what, but it's there. The the mesh on the hood is just fantastic. The door does open up, and you can kind of get uh, I swear it opens you can kind of get an idea of what's inside the cab there which is really pretty cool it's hard to see in there but everything everything's in there which is pretty neat I love that the doors open up it's just a great little a great little thing it's the simple things that make me happy the hydraulic lines all look pretty good it's got a single shank ripper um, it, it really is pretty cool like you can see where you have the hydraulic cylinder to, to pull the pin to adjust your shank height that's pretty cool and you got the lines running out to it which is really nice um it's the shank isn't adjustable i don't think if you really wanted to pull this pin out i think you could but i don't think it's meant to be adjusted um the undercarriage looks very good the tracks are really well done Underneath is just nothing. It's just blank. Now the the ripper moves, and it adjusts the way it's supposed to. And it's cool you have that uh, that metal guide that moves with the ripper too. That that's pretty neat. The blade is supposed to move, but I it, it is so stiff I just can't do anything with it, and I don't want to break it. But it really is pretty nice. Like I said, the the decals are pretty clean and crisp. You know, some could be better, but for the most part, it's really pretty good. The the paint's very good. Now, I did have to order this. It came from China, so it did get a little chipped in the box. You definitely have some chipping on the blade. You got a big chunk, big chunker right there that's about to fall off. But uh, I think if he could get these domestically, it'd be a different story. Uh, you know, they didn't have to ride in the back of a postage truck from God knows where to my house. But uh. That, that would certainly help. So, anyway, overall, it's a really nice model. And I remember these come out, I want to say they came out at a Con Expo. Either Con Expo or maybe it was Bama, or Balma, Bama, I don't know how you pronounce it. And at the time when they were brand new, and this was a couple years ago, the, the, the thing that I heard was it was every bit as good as the CCM dudes, or every bit as good as the, the CCM dresser, the TD40Bs. And... I thought, well, I don't know about that. I mean, CCM, it was pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff back then. I mean, really, that was the first diecast model that CCM had done, and they've they've done things a little bit better since then. But I gotta say, this is really, uh, it's up there. It's definitely up there. It's very, very close to being just as good, if not maybe a little bit better then. So it's really kind of hard to get a good uh, size comparison. Just for the fact that these are different scales. This is 148 scale and this is 150. So generally all over, this is going to be just a little bit bigger than the, the 150 scale dozer. But you can kind of see how close the blades are uh, just in size. It's a little bit skinnier on the 150th than it is on the 148th, but they're pretty close. Now there is about 40 years of production difference between these two dozers, but you can still see some similarities. I mean, really, the, the blades are still the same. The, the undercarriages, the frames, they're still pretty similar. The, the ripper setups are also pretty similar. You can see some internal components are the same. Like, it's, they still use the same, you know, fuel tank system. Um, obviously, there are some differences. That the cabs are very different. Uh, we'll see that when you turn when I turn them around. The, the motors and the transmissions are, are obviously different. 
uh, God help you if you were trying to get a 40 year old motor to pass emissions and uh, regulations today, it would never happen. Uh, but yeah, the, the transmission is obviously updated. When you set them side by side, like again, the blades are pretty close. You see how much taller this one sets than the 150 scale, but they're still pretty close. And you can really see the, uh, let's see here, the difference in the, um, the cabs too. Like this is a center mount cab. This one's offset to the side just a little bit. A lot of the older dozers did that. I don't really know why. You know, one reason or another, I'm sure it made sense at the time, but nobody does it anymore. Um, but yeah, you can really just see, you know, just how more modern uh, this cab is than, than what this is. Uh, again, like from the back, they, they really are pretty similar, to be honest. There's not a whole lot of difference here. Overall, it's, they're two really nice dozers. And it's fascinating to me, just absolutely fascinating, that y you have a dozer that, essentially was made for like you know the the td40 really was in production for about i don't know i can't remember probably 10 years before uh international sold to dresser and then dresser basically kept the same thing for like 10 or 15 years and then dressed up bought the the td dozer line they brought the 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 560 payloaders and they still make them today and obviously there's you know, again, there's little differences. Creature comforts, motors, transmissions, those are different. But the basic bones are still there. And it's wild to think that the the bulk of this dozer was engineered and designed and built 50 years ago. That's insane. Like, that's crazy. And that really just speaks to the quality that International Harvester was putting out. And I'm sure, you know, if Caterpillar... God forbid they they went out of business and sold out. I'm sure the exact same thing would have happened to them, especially in the 80s. You know, they were just putting out just absolute legendary peak products in the mid 80s. And I'm sure, you know, if, if they were in a similar situation as International and they got scooped up by somebody else, you'd still have, you know, like the 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 old 953s running and like the 416s and the, you know, nothing would have changed. Because that stuff was just fantastic quality. It really was. Um, anyway, it's just it's 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 cool to see them side by side. Like I said, it, it's fascinating to me just for the history aspect of it. So that's about all I got for this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. I usually try to reply to you know answer any questions you know as, as soon as I can. Might be a day or two, but I, I get there. If there's something you want to see, let me know. I might just have it. I got about, you know, probably five more videos to make of things that people have asked for. I try to put out a video, a new video every Saturday. So uh, if you want to see more of what I have, please subscribe to Maryland Construction Diecast. And thanks for watching.